Hello, George Romanich here. Today we are exploring artificial gravity and Coriolis effects associated with artificial gravity. This is a very interesting topic because it's always interesting to investigate some hypothetical questions. What would happen if something? And today we will investigate what would happen if we have a donut-like space station that is rotating and it needs to rotate in a way to create artificial gravity that we feel on our planet Earth. You can see the text of this problem now on your screens. First, you need to understand the difference between centrifugal and centripetal force, and I discussed that difference in my video on centrifugal force when I was spinning together with a cat. So you might want to watch that. So what is happening here is that this fellow actually has some peripheral velocity v in this direction because space station is rotating like so. And uh, if there is no floor he would just continue coasting in the straight line forever. However, there is floor, and this floor is rotating together with him, so at every point, the floor is preventing him from, co for, from continuing to coast in the straight line. And the fact that floor is acting on him means there is centripetal force, and that's the only real force, so there is centripetal force exerted by the floor on this astronaut, and that force is pushing him towards the center, centripetal force. But as the floor is pushing him towards the center, that means there is this apparent force called centrifugal force. Okay? This one is real, this one is apparent. Now, since he continues going around, he doesn't accelerate towards the center and he definitely doesn't go through the floor. That means these two forces are the same. So, uh, centrifugal force, well, let's write it. Centrifugal force needs to be equal but opposite to centripetal force. Now, centrifugal force will be mass of this astronaut. This force needs to be exactly the same as the weight that he would have on planet Earth. So this force needs to be mg. That's what we are forcing. Namely, we want this space station to rotate so that this force is exactly mg. And centripetal force is uh, uh, m omega of the space station cross omega of the space station cross radius of this space station. Radius of the space station because he's right at the, he's standing on the floor. Now you can see that mass and mass cancels. And notice that here we will have that G is equal omega of the space station squared times radius of the space station. Here I don't have to worry about the angle between these vectors because angular velocity omega is out of the blackboard and uh, radius is on the plane of the blackboard, so the angle is 90 degrees, and the signs, uh, of sine of 90 degrees is 1, so here I would have times 1, which I don't have to write. And this is the end of the problem. We basically solve the problem because the only unknown here is omega s, so omega s is equal square root G over Rs.
And if you plug in numbers over here, what you will get is that the result is equal to zero point three one three second to power negative one. So this needs to be angular velocity of this space station given the radius of 100 meters so that this astronaut has the same feeling of gravity, artificial gravity, that we have on our planet Earth. We will use these results in part B to see what would be the effect of Coriolis force in this environment. Until then, goodbye.